I'm back working on cylinder head number two. I'm going to go through this a lot faster. First, chasing the threads. Clean the spark plug hole. Or check it that it's clear with a plug. All the way in and out, real nice and easy. Got guides. They're nice and clear. Cleating holes for the cylinder studs. Well, on these holes for the cylinder head studs, you see the first three quarters of an inch or so are drilled, and then the holes get bigger, and the rest of the hole is as it was cast. So keep it in, keep this part in mind, because I'm going to be making some pilots for later on when I just set the heads in place before I bolt them down, and you'll see why at that time, so that it lines the heads up for when I work on the exhaust manifold. But that's just another interesting note that the first three quarters of an inch or so is drilled. First we have to adjust it so the stone doesn't come in contact with the seat. Now grind it. Oh, we got a ways to go yet. Because we had changed the angle of that stone just slightly, uh, it's the same as the other ones. It's first touching on the inside and it'll work its way to the outside. On to the intake valve. Now it's time for lapping the valves. I'm doing this just enough to see where the contact pattern is. Now I'll take a look at them. Now you can see it, the contact pattern is right in there. Good spot for it, good location for it. You see there's pitting in the valve, but I could grind and grind and grind and probably never disappear. That's why I'm leaving kind of a wide seat, so hopefully it has enough sealing surface. And you can see this edge of this valve is a little on the sharp side, and because there's plenty of room here, I, I may grind this valve a little smaller in diameter get rid of this sharp edge and any sharp points so they don't glow and cause uh, pre-ignition. Now I'll check the intake valve. See now the intake valve, the contact is all the way out to the edge of the valve. I don't know if they're supposed to be or not, but the intake valves are, oh, an eighth of an inch smaller in diameter than the exhaust, but the seats appear to be about the same. But we don't have to worry as much about the intake valve, the edge getting hot to cause pre-ignition. But we have a nice wide contact pattern there. Like I said, wider than I would normally do for a valve job. But because of the various pittings in the seats and the valves, I'm leaving it wide. So hopefully there's contact all the way around good enough so it doesn't eventually burn. So now all that's left for this one, we'll look at the seats, but I'm sure they're fine. This one will set aside and go on to cylinder head number three. Now, I think you can see it here. An earlier video I had mentioned that I didn't know if this, his 60s originally, the seats just were the cast iron head or if they had seats pressed in right from the factory. But I believe they originally used a cast iron head and I'm using this head to use the example. Cause this one, obviously had a seat pressed in because you can see the I think you can see the line there where it was machined and then a new seat was pressed in it's a little obvious it's a little apparent up here but that you can never tell for sure because they might use the cutter tool to narrow the seat and it might make it look like there was a, a seat pressed in but down here you can see and feel the parting line as to where it was machined and pressed the seat in. And on the intake valve seat, 
you can see there's no machining marks here whatsoever, no lips all the way around, and no telltale signs on the top. So this seat is actually the casting of the head. So apparently they either they just put in exhaust seats. We'll look at the other heads as we do them, if one is replaced or both or neither. But this one is using the cast iron from the head as a seat, where on the exhaust side you can obviously see where there was a seat pressed, cut and pressed in at one time. So now we'll go on to cylinder head number three. Back to the same on cylinder head number three. Chase the threads. Clean the spark plug hole. Check how a spark plug goes in and out. All the way down and back by hand, so that's good. Clean the push rod guides. Check them that they fit good. Wire brush the valve guides one more time. And clean the bolt holes for the head studs. Flush out the guide. Install the pilot little funny note here I was looking at the uh, tablet see if the lens had come into focus and I had why isn't coming into focus and I realized I didn't have my glasses on because <laughs> I always got to take my glasses off when I put on a dust mask because whenever I'm grinding anything with cast iron I always wear a dust mask no matter how little bit of dust there is because you probably heard my breathing I have asthma at least that's what the doctor says. And cast iron dust is really bad on it. So we're going to continue with grinding the seats. Now that one looks good. Now we'll go to the intake seat. Well, you probably can't make it out. But this one's the same. This is the exhaust seat. And there's been one cut and pressed in. Because you can see the telltale sign of a machining lip there and also this one distinctly around the top but the intake uh, there are no signs of a seat being cut in at all it's just a uh, cast as it was cast from the factory so we'll grind the intake seat now I want to show you something you can see on the stone here where it's loading up and I've seen that depending on the alloys in the valve seats or the cast iron some of them will make the stone load up like that, and then it doesn't want to cut much anymore. So then I have to dress the stone more often to get it cleaned up so it cuts better and faster without making the grinder work so hard. So now I gotta redress the stone again and go back at grinding the intake seat. You can see now the stone is clean, and we'll see, go back at grinding. It should cut a lot better now. Now it cut much faster, and it's doing the full width of the seat. So now I'm going to lap it and see what the pattern on the valve looks like. Now I'll lap the valve. Lapping really shouldn't be necessary. I normally wouldn't do it. I usually put uh, just a. Usually I just put like a. Take a number two pencil and put pencil marks on the head of the valve and put it in and move it and see if it's making contact all the way. But in this case with the pitted valves and the pitted seats, I just want to have a little added security, maybe if it's just in my own mind to see that they are seating. There's the exhaust. So here's the exhaust valve. Unfortunately, where it's seating is right in the middle where the least pitting is on the valve head. And because uh, there's very heavy pitting above and below where it's seating. And uh, 
Fortunately, it's seeding far enough up that I'll be able to grind this little smaller in diameter so we don't have a sharp of an edge here on the valve to get hot. So now I'll look at the intake valve. Now here, I'm not entirely happy. You can see it's touching on the outer edge and inner edge, but not in the middle. So my grinding stone must have been loading up when I was finishing up with that seat. So I'm going to take that one, redress the stone again, and redo that seat just a little bit. So that when I lap it, I get full contact all the way across. Well, I lapped it again, and I'm much happier with the contact now. So we're going to call that good. So now we have cylinder head number four to go to. Now this head came off a... Uh number three on this tractor and it's going back on there but I'm guessing that at one time this was head number one on some tractor so that just is another indication of parts put together from different tractors cylinder head number four you know the routine chase the threads now here's a good view I was chasing the threads for the hole for the stud that holds the manifolds on and look, there aren't a whole lot of threads in that hole. So you, I guess you're going to have to be kind of person that has to really pay attention not to put that stud in too far. Because you can't have the stud that holds the manifolds on going in against the head bolt or the head stud. So I have to pay attention to that. And most certainly not over tighten the manifold studs when you're tightening it. Or it wouldn't take a lot to pull those threads out of there probably. And there's also a good view that you can see how the, except for the three quarters of an inch or so near the head gasket surface, the rest of the way the head stud holes are just as cast. They're rough on the inside. You can see they aren't drilled all the way. So I can go back at finishing chasing threads and the rest. Cleaning all the necessary holes. Clean the spark plug hole. Check the spark plug fit. Check the push rod fit. And on to grinding the seats. Now I'm just looking. It looks as though this head may possibly have had a seat cut in in both places. Here on the exhaust port, it looks like there's been one cut in because you can see the distinction line of how it corroded over the years. So I think there was one cut in there. And there also on the intake, I think there was one cut in by that line you can see there. I don't think that's from narrowing the seat. So at any rate, we'll go at finishing up the seats. Now I'll get the seats ground. Now the exhaust seat. Well, the seats look good. Now we're going to try lapping them. Now I'll lap them. Take them out and see how they look. Is the intake. Now the intake looks nice all the way around. These two valves are probably the two best valves in, in the whole tractor. Now I'll look at the exhaust valve. So now we have contact all the way around on the exhaust valve. So this is going to be it for this video. The next step will be Final washing of the heads and parts, assembling the valves in the heads, and uh, then it'll start to get pretty exciting setting the heads on the tractor. 
So thanks again for watching. I hope you're enjoying it. We'll see you on the next one.